All right, so here is this mouse that I just got for work. And this is the 3D connection space mouse. It's a space mouse compact. This thing is very heavy, actually. I wasn't expecting it to this to be this heavy, but I really like the weight on it. So that is fantastic. So I'm gonna show you how you can set this mouse up. I really like the design on this thing because it's nice and smooth. It's got the black on the top there. This wiggles from back to front, side to side. It twists a little bit, but it's a solid piece of rubber. So it doesn't like go all the way around. I was always curious about that. So I like that. This is very heavy. Like, see a sound, you hear how heavy this is. And this is the wired version of the mouse. Let's see how useful it can be in Altium Designer. So to set this thing up, you actually want to go to the 3D connection website and then go down to the driver download option. If you can't find it, then just Google like 3DXWare 10 or Windows or something or Mac if you're using that. Then you click on the tool and then it looks at the options here. I have a 64 bit operating system, so I'll download the 64 bit version. Once that's downloaded, you just install it and it'll get set up. So We'll wait for it. Okay, it looks like it's ready to get started. So we'll look at the options, advanced settings. You can remove old user settings. We've got trainer, viewer, all of these. I will go for all of them, except an install. I'll enable extension. I'm not sure what the extension really does, but hey, I'm just excited to use this. Right, you can register the product. I'm going to skip this part. So here we have the trainer, the manuals, settings, viewer, collage, demo, registration. So you can take a look at videos. I'm just going to set up the trainer here. And my mouse is not plugged in. So, so I plugged it in. Now that the drivers are here, we're gonna hit next. So with the mouse pointed away, pulling it up and down. See that? And exaggerate it a little bit, right? See, so you move it left and right like this. So the way I do this more easily is to hold closer to the base, the bottom of the puck, right? Not this base, for, of course, but like this movable part. Move that around. Took me a while to get used to. Right, so you could push it away and push it in. See how I'm pulling, adjusting like that. I find that holding it at the base really helps with this. So see this twisty part here, it twists and it increased the rotation based on how you twist it, which direction you go. This puck doesn't twist in itself, it just adjusts. It's a solid rubber or silicon thing. So the trick here if for this part of the setup is to tilt that. So this is the tilt. What you wanna avoid is pushing from the base like we did earlier. You wanna tilt this way. All right, very cool. Okay, and in here, we can tilt that, right? And that's really cool, I like that. Right, so, and they have this thing where you can test all settings at the same time, right? So I can move in and out and sideways all at the same time, pull up and down, tilt this thing, move it around, rotate it, spin it this way, you know, it's really cool. I like it. Okay. And they even have this little game here where you could like start this game, try to match that, it's like, ta-da, yeah. And then you can go to the next stage when you're playing this game, where they want you to go down here. It's pretty cool. Oh, oh, let's see. Am I actually gonna get it? I think I can do it. This is tricky. Wow. Yes. There we go. Nice. And then can we get the next one? Oh, they're really. Oh, 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 oh. 
Hold on. Hold on. Can I get this? Hold up. This is... This is a bit more challenging than I... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. First of all, pull it up. Rotate it. Turn it this way. Okay. I think that, like, using all three fingers helps me control it better. There we go. Not the fastest time, but you... <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Cool, cool, cool. So that is the game. Uh, pretty good. Let's hit next. And the connection is finished. Perfect. All right. So now that that's set up, I'm going to show you how this actually works for setup. Let's set this up in Altium Designer. And a quick note. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, most likely the designers of this mouse, right, have like some mechanical design engineer, overall product designer, and also an electronics designer. And the electronics designer may use any software tool. It may be KiCad, Altium, uh, or other software, right? The software that I am demonstrating is an electrical and electronics engineering design software called Altium Designer. This is the kind of stuff that electrical and electronics engineers do, like hardware design engineers. This is something that you would see in some type of cool technology or something like that, right? But then it would be covered by an enclosure. Likewise, how the 3D mouse, it itself is just a bunch of electronics covered by an enclosure, okay? So that's what I think is really cool. And if you are curious about getting into electrical or electronics engineering, and you know, if you're just curious about how can I design the electronics inside of these cool tech gadgets, check out this link in the description below where you can download the Altium Designer software and then make sure you use a special link so that you get like just special discounts and everything, 30% off with the three trial in Altium 365. And then you can do your own really cool designs. And then if you're all to mechanical modeling as well, then you can design an enclosure around it and create a product that, that people review like on this video. Let's get back into the device. Uh, we can go to settings and then here it says OBS. That's the software I'm using right now. But we, here's the trick. You actually would click on the software you want to use and then go back to so for our advanced settings, we go into advanced settings and then it has options for rotation. I found that pan and zoom and whatnot are the best way to get started in calibrating your calibrating this mouse. Here we've got we've got these options by default. Which what I want to do is like uncheck these and then test each one one by one. So we've got you know pan and zoom. I use my mouse to pan and zoom just now. So here by default, it looks like moving the base of the mouse only does so much. We're pulling this up. I'm not really sure what this is doing. So maybe I should close Altium. That's one trick. If you find that it's not working, you want to close Altium Designer and then reopen Altium. With Altium Designer open, And clicking on the software here. Okay, so now it recognizes Altium Designer. It says Altium. So this looks like it will be working properly. By default, it's going to set everything on, like pan, zoom, rotation, forward, backward. So what do all of these mean? Um, right, navigation, pan, zoom, just means you can pan and zoom, and zoom in, zoom out. This is panning. This is zooming, right? And I'm doing this with the regular mouse. For rotation, that's not really a thing, or but yeah. So the zoom direction, zoom direction refers to how do you want the zoom direction to go if you were to, are you trying to use forward and back on your 3D mouse to zoom, or are you trying to use the up and down option on the 3D mouse to zoom? So let's take a look. And an LED is active. If I turn it off, it turns off the LEDs as you see there. If I turn it on, it's back on. So let's see what the defaults do. And voila, it's just automatically working. That's fantastic. The thing about this is, while it is extremely smooth, and I like that, uh, some of these things are not, some of these things are backwards or not intuitive. So let's go with, let's find some settings that work for me. 
First of all, I like to turn everything off. Or everything except one option off. And the, I test each of them. Like I want to move this left and right to pan left and right. So let's see if that actually does that. Okay. It does, but it's like reversed. So what if I were to turn this mouse toward me? Hmm. Interesting. I feel like the name of the logo should be facing to me, like should be facing me. So I'm going to do it this way so that the cord is away from me. And then I'm going to reverse the settings. So let's set this as reverse. So now it pans the way I want it to pan. Although that's kind of weird. One second, let me try this. Okay, you know what, I think I will go with this because it's like panning the sheet. It's like I'm moving the sheet as an object. It's totally up to you. You might be thinking, Oh, I move it as a space or move it as a sheet. Okay, the next setting is this pan. Okay, this is zooming in once I move this once I move this puck back and forth. I don't want that I want the up and down. I want up and down to zoom in and out, not the back and forth. So how about we do this? How about I choose the up down option as the zoom, whereas this can be the pan. There we go. And then if I set these both to reverse, then okay, this is more actually this is better. Okay, I know what it is now. When I'm using the mouse, I want to feel like I'm using the camera. But when I'm using the mouse with my like my right mouse, I want to make it seem like I'm moving the object. Yeah. This makes more sense to me. All right, cool. It's it's natural to all right, it's like I'm moving the camera. So now if I want to zoom up and down, right, I think I'll turn this on. And then see how this goes. But right now, if I only move, if I if I only were to move like the puck from side to side or forward and back, then it would pan this. But I, it looks like I need to reverse these. Like every time you activate the thing, it turns off the option to reverse. I can pan left, right, and that, and I can zoom in by pulling the puck up and down. But here, I don't like this option for the zoom, so I will turn the reverse off. And I prefer this. So pulling the puck up zooms out. Pulling the puck, pushing the puck down is like moving the camera down closer to the sheet, and so on and so forth. This is really nice. I, li I like to stick with this. Once I'm at a good checkpoint, I would, mm, yeah. I would like to export these settings. So let's close this more and then export settings. Not OBS or global, just Alt Altium. Click OK. And then I'll say that's my Altium schematic settings. All right. Save that. Let's go back into the advanced settings. Okay, my settings are saved. Fantastic. Now, for the rotation, before I even get to that, let's go into the PCB design. All right, do the settings hold for the PCB? Yes, they do. That means I can move around, pick up components, zoom in, zoom out, you know, and I can like pick something up. Although this is stuck right here, but if I were to hit like, the shortcut on my keypad, I could like start routing and this and that, which is one button. I can move around. This is very smooth. I like this. Let's go ahead and oh, see, I can move the component just like this while moving the thing around. That's so crazy. It's wicked. All right, look at that. Okay, so this works, but I want to get into 3D mode, right? So like 3D layout mode. And that's good and all. But what if I want to rotate my 3D model? So I would go into the tool. 
and then see about rotation if I have full effect. I'll just turn all of these on and see what it does. So twisting works as expected. That's great. Tilting back and forth works just like it's supposed to. And tilting from left to right works pretty fine. Maybe I want to reverse that or not. Great. I mean, this feels natural then, you know, so you get used to it. It takes a while to get used to, but then it looks like it would be just fine. Take that. Okay. So now what if I want to get into 2D versus 3D view? There are, there are two buttons on here that allow me to change that. I'm going to hit close and save my settings before I do anything else. Let's say Altium, let's just say Altium settings in general, schematic and PCB. Cool. Let's go back into the advanced settings. This is all looks good. I don't know what dominant means. So yeah, hit close. Now let's look at the buttons. Here's the trick. Well, before I do that, let me show you. If I go over here and then hit this left button, there's a button over here. This gives me the option for, say, virtual number pad, redo properties, and I can go to the properties. That's the RM tools and RM views. So what's RM views? RM views, if I hit the second button, gives me options like front view, top view, and so on. I don't find these that useful. Right, I don't I don't find these that useful. The fit is actually pretty useful though. I'm not gonna lie. But the rest of these don't really work as expected. So if I hit the number two on my keyboard to go into 2D mode, um I find that what's most useful is this. Most useful settings for buttons for me right now would be clicking in here and then just typing the number three in here. For the left button and then for the right button i hit asterisk on the number pad the number e-pad why is that because i can hit the asterisk and go through the different layers whenever i want in addition check this out if i want to start routing like with control w and then zoom in just my mouse doing that but i zoom in and i start routing then if i want to go to the next layer i can click and then hit the button on here, which is the asterisk, and then continue routing without having to like, um, without having to take my right hand off of my right mouse, right? Instead of hitting my, instead of hitting the asterisk key on the keyboard, I can just use this, right? I'm going to right click to end that. Then if I want to go into 3D mode just like this, then I can do it like that. Just to show a quick view, like if somebody wants to say, hey, let me look at the 3D part, I can do it without having to take my hand off of the 3D connection space mouse. However, there's one little problem I have to hit. T I do have to take my hand off the mouse to hit the 2 key to get into 2D mode. So maybe there's a better way or better set of mappings I can use. Okay, that's enough of that. I'll show you the last set of features for buttons. So you can go into buttons. And then if you want, you can click on these options and they have various options like virtual number pad, virtual LCD, decrease speed, you know, so many different options. The microphone, media player, and an Altium Designer specific, you have application use, all of these things, top view. Then there's just, you can pull up an application from your, just a button. You can do things on your keyboard, like the control key. And then there's the mouse options. And then radio menus. Right? You can make a new radio menu too. So if you want, you can customize this. Name your radio menu like Altium. And then you have a four section thing. So radio menu one, this, this can, you can expand your uh, keyboard shortcuts. So this could be like three to go in 3D mode. This could be two to go into 2D mode. This could be something else like save. And then this could be some kind of via uh, like fit something for fit 
or flipping the board. So if you could do control F and then hit close. So now if I were to, if I were to go into my settings and then choose, see it already assigned Altium to the thing. And then I now hit my left button. It gives me these options, right? And the thing is I can just swipe up on my mouse. I don't even have to click a button. I can just swipe up on the mouse once I get the options window and then it takes it back to the view. So it's very cool. If I do that, it flips the PCB, right? I'm already in 2D mode, so that's fine. Flips the PCB again and that saves the thing. So very amazing. You know, just to really go all the way into this, let's go ahead and set more buttons. For this, I have my options, radio menu, and let's set a new radio menu. Let's say you want a new radio menu for a schematic. Right? And you want it to be eight section. That's right. So the sky's the limit on this thing, right? You could do uh, control W, or you don't even have to do that. You can map uh, routing to this thing. You have you have the asterisk for the next layer. You have three. It would make sense to put two on two, right? So let's do one, two, three, and then maybe control W for routing and then, or wiring. Then you have other options like component placement or control all, control S to save. Control Z to undo something and control Y to redo something, right? And then instead of schematic, I'll change this to PCB. Click close. So now we have all kinds of options. You can save the document you can hit two, hit one for board planning mode, three for 3D mode, right? And it's not until the thing comes off of the mouse button that it becomes an option there. You can do control Z to undo what was ever done last, 2D mode to go back to the view, control A to you know, select everything. What if you wanna start wiring just like that? Like so many options. Okay, and uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I felt like showing the full setup because it can be very frustrating to set this up the first time. And I just wanted to make your life easier. All right. But this tool is amazing. Like this mouse, like uh, I'm not going to go back to um, the typical click on your keyboard, try to do things method again. This is just fantastic. Okay. If you're using a similar mouse or if you're, you know, how many comments on other mice that can be used. Uh, let me know and then I might just buy it and then do a review on that to see if it's good for engineering. But this is great for both schematic and uh, PCB layout. It's just fantastic. Like, it's so convenient. Look at that. And I can zoom in as, as like smoothly. Like, look at that. Oh my gosh. I can do that while routing. Be like, okay, I want to go over here. Let's do a route. Like, it's just amazing. As opposed to this thing where you're routing, right? And then you have to go like this with the right mouse button. Right. Or then you have to zoom in and out while you're doing the thing. It's like, no. Or if you're in the PCB where you have to uh, pick up a component and then, you're, then you use the middle mouse button at the same time with the double press button press. Like, nah, it's, it's too much. Like... This mouse makes things so much easier. All right, thank you so much for watching. This mouse is amazing. This is a 3D connection mouse. And no, this video is not sponsored. I just wanted my, uh, I just wanted to use this and try this out because they were like, hey, you know, we'll get you something for work, work from home or whatever. And I decided, let me try this out because the last time I used a 3D mouse, but in mechanical modeling, I got my university or school. It was really nice. And I'm like, whoa, if I can do this in Altium, that would be fantastic. I'd be flying. And I haven't gone back since, right? Love it, love it, love it. Thank you so much for watching. This makes me think about what, what are things we're doing that while it gets the job done is actually suboptimal for our workflow, right? There are so many things that we have to keep in mind all the time, like 
footprints, part selection, hardware design in general, designing things in general, routing, PC, routing PCB layout, the stack up and all that stuff. All these extra little 1% things or improvements, especially with things like this mouse to make life easier, just they start to add up after a while. You start to become a bit more efficient so you can focus more on what you enjoy doing or what you need to get done instead of like settling with the norm, like a normal mouse. Not that a normal mouse is bad by any means, but even this, right? I have multiple buttons on this mouse so that I don't have to go to my keyboard every time to control W to start wiring, see, or to undo something. If you have anything that helps you improve your workflow, feel free to let us know. If you like this video and you're getting value from it, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, subscribe to the channel. And uh, if you want more videos like this, where we go into things that can help your engineering workflow and just cool, cool gadgets and tech in general. Okay. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.